Hmm. Close your eyes for a second. Okay? As you close your eyes, I'm going to tell you what I'm about to do. I'm going to hide one of the graphs, and then I'm going to make it reappear. And I'm not going to tell you which one is which. Okay? And then when you have a look at the graph, when I tell you to open your eyes, I want you to tell me which one you're looking at and how did you know. Okay, so keep your eyes shut. Okay, you can open them now. Now this is one of the graphs. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. It's either the painter one or it's this one that we just did. Which one do you think it is? What do you reckon, Will? Uh, is it y equals 2 over x? Who agrees with Will? y equals 2 over x. Oh, that's, 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 what a dog move, guys. Okay, so you, you guys all think it's the painter, right? So therefore, I'm going to ask you, everyone disagreed, you seem pretty bold, like no one was even like, ah, uh, maybe? So why do you think this is the, I mean, what, why? Why is my question to you, why do you think it's the painter graph? Sorry, just before you give your answer, I'm just going to say to all of you, if you can't give me an answer to this question, you're in the same boat as Will right now, right? Because you just flipped a coin, okay? You've changed your mind, that's okay. Well, okay, now, now I'll let you finish your answer. Why do you think it's the painters? Uh, because, like, scale is, like, different. The scale is different. Hold on a second. The scale is different. But how did you know that that indicated to you that this was the painter graph and not the other one? Which, by the way, uh, you're exactly right. There's the painters and there's the other one. What is it about one versus the other? What tells you the difference? One of them is closer to the origin. One of them is closer into the origin and you can tell it's closer because of the numbers. Do you see that? Like, um, what's the closest spot? Let me just get rid of this guy again. What is the closest spot to the origin? I think it's around about there, right? Can you just look in and tell me what do you think are the coordinates of that spot right there, just roughly? Uh, seven, seven, seven-ish. Okay, seven, seven, right? Now, when you put the other guy in, there he is. He's way closer, right? What would you call that? Just eyeball it. One, one, two, two, so somewhere around there. It's the numbers that make a difference, okay? So, my point is to say, now looking at your graph, how do I know right now which one this is? And the answer is, I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know which one it is, because I don't know, is that seven away? Is it one or two away? So you and I, we need to put some extra information on this graph, okay? So here's the last bit I'm gonna ask you to do. We tried x equals zero, didn't work. I want us to try a value like x equals one. If x equals one, what should y equal? This is the graph we're looking at right now. It'll equal two, right? Because y equals two over one, which is two, okay? So that means, if x equals 1 and y equals 2, that is a set of coordinates I can put onto the graph. Does this make sense? So let's put that on. That's 1, 2. Can you find where 1, 2 should be on your page? And go ahead and draw it on. You need to be careful. Try and put some decent scale on there. I'm placing mine roughly there. Okay, you okay with that? Like you want it to be, it doesn't have to be super ultra accurate, but as long as it's in roughly the right spot. And please label it as well, okay? Now, you can actually just, just put it somewhere else. It's on the graph, okay? It doesn't have to, not each one of those has to be one point, you know, or one unit. Now, have a look at this guy, right? You see this can't possibly be the painter graph anymore. Why? Because we've, we've locked it in. In fact, if you've got another color there, we actually, because of the function of this point, we give it a name. We call this often a point for scale because it's a point and that's exactly what it gives us it tells us how big or how small or how tiny this thing is okay what do you see that's in common come on shout some things out we've, we've already drawn like three of these today right what does this have in common with all the other ones it's still hyperbola right in fact every single graph in this exercise is a hyperbola surprise surprise okay um another thing that's similar is have a look vertically up and down do you see there's a value, it gets closer and closer and closer, but never gets there. What y value is that? Have a look, have a look. That's y equals zero. You never get there, right? No matter how big x gets, x can get huge, and y just gets small, but it never gets zero, okay? But there's a difference. Let me put it on for you. It's, there's, there's, an, there's an intercept, right, for y there. And also, importantly, have a look at this guy. See this red line? Can you see there? This is the vertical asymptote, the place where it's not allowed to go. Why is it negative one? What's the problem with negative one? Oh, 
Um, Here's the function, right? If you sub negative one, you yeah, you put in negative one, and this thing becomes zero, and the thing explodes. Okay, so that is something that I want you to take on when you do the rest of question one. Whenever the denominator is zero, that's when you get a problem. Okay, thank you very much, Year Eleven. You worked hard.